Hello, good morning. good morning, and welcome to the place where the Holy Spirit dwells. God with us, Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist Church. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful sight it was to see all our visiting friends and here with us, and family members too, that are visiting with us. God is so good. It is a privilege for us to come into the house of the Lord. So on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Hardcastle, we want to welcome each and every one here today. Pastor, actually you expected me to say he's with our sister church in Windermere, didn't you? For our members, well no, he's actually away with our pathfinders and adventurers. They went to the leadership meeting in Miami, amen? So for those of you visiting, if you have young children or grandchildren, we have an active pathfinder and adventurer group here. So pastor and the leaders are actually gone to that leadership meeting. And we discussed leadership this morning, the importance of leadership in our Sabbath school lesson when we talked about Stephen and the other deacons. So right now, the Lord has provided opportunities for further training and they're gone to be able to come back and to continue to work with our children. And pastor is very much an advocate for our young people, so he's there supporting as well. Amen? So let's keep them in prayer. They traveled to Miami, so that's a good little distance away. We've been asked for the Lord to just help them have a good Sabbath there as well, and that they come back safely to our homes, to their homes tomorrow. Amen. Now, we talked a little bit about it, so let's just go right to it. The Back to School Backpack Campaign. Amen. I didn't realize it was such a popular thing. I, I mean, I was in church last week um, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am going to apologize publicly for those people who said, I, we didn't know you were going to be gone. We looked for you last week. But I ran down, and uh, for those of you who don't know, today is what, the 28th? Today the 28th? You know, my, I have a five-month-old grandson as of yesterday, and he was dedicated last Sabbath. So I ran down to Atlanta, and was able by God's grace to participate in um, giving this little one back to the Lord. So that's where I was and I, I, I'm back. And I did not have my phone with me. So I couldn't do like my texting and all the things to get information out for those who didn't know I was gone. But thank the Lord we're here. I'm back here today and to be able to share with my church family again and it really is a blessing for that. So while, since I've been back, we've been working on the backpack campaign. The program is set for next week. We're going to meet in here briefly. We're having a couple surprises for you. And so we want you to, to really come out and bring friends and neighbors with you. It will be good if they could contact us ahead of time. And the church number is on the bulletin. I noticed it was not on the flyer, so we apologize. But it's on your bulletin. If they call ahead, it gives us a better idea of how many children to expect. Okay, so we can better prepare. So please, if they can call ahead, that's good, but we're preparing officially for 50 children at this time. But if there's going to be more, we just would like to know ahead of time because God is blessing. And so next week, we're asking, well, it should have started already. And as I said, I wasn't here. Did, who saw the box out front? The back to school box, who saw that? There's a box right by the water fountain. And if you peek inside, I can see that some people have already put something there. Items are already inside. And so if you want to donate in that way, you can go to the Dollar Tree. You can go to actually the um, Sister Carla and I went out yesterday scouting for items. And if you actually go to whole Office Depot, they have those exercise books for 25 cents. Publix has them for 50 cents. So you can actually play a role, even with a dollar, even with five dollars, so somebody in the community can walk away with a backpack and some information about God's love for them. Amen? Amen. Starting next week. So it's out there in the foyer. Those of you, again, who are donating funds, please feel free to do that because those backpacks will be purchased by, um, we need to do the purchasing on Thursday. So please. Contact us, which would be Brother Walker, myself, Sister Carla, but please give us your donations. We're going to be purchasing all those backpacks on Thursday to get them ready for the August 11th. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then next week, special day. What's that special day, Emmanuel? I didn't hear, I didn't hear that. Family Life Day. 
Now, you know, the family is the most important foundational building block of society. Did you know that? And so it doesn't sound like we're happy about families. <laughs> Family Life Day. Well, if that's so, then that's why we need to be out here next Sabbath. Because when we are, what the things we're going to learn next Sabbath, you would have to pay a lot of money to go to conferences to get that. But by God's grace, we're having guest speakers coming in, and they're awesome. They're from Renewed Hearts, Inc. And these are the, this is a couple that actually spoke at the Young People's Youth Summit back in April. But we had so many adults talk about it because their kids, young people came back and talked about these speakers that we promised that we'd have, have them come back so the entire church could hear. Parents could hear the dynamic and beneficial information that their young people received from, well, not the same information, but they could get to know and understand why it was such an impactful weekend for our youth. So Family Life Day it starts 7.30, Friday evening, that's the kickoff. And you don't want to miss that topic because that topic, that presentation, it's going to be, I think it's actually talking about, um, it's the fight of your life. You want to understand what that is, you have to come out 7.30 on Friday evening. The fight of your life. And we know how things are with families, so you want to come out and find out what's behind that topic. Then on Sabbath morning, the next presentation comes in. The presentation will actually begin, the program will start at 9.15. We always have our song service or scripture or prayer, but we're going to have a presentation on family vibes. Uh, we ever wonder, say, okay, how does your family affect you, impact you now, and then your family in the future for those who are younger, you want to come back? Family vibes, good, bad, or negative, we need to come out and understand about family vibes. You're going to find that interesting as well. Then the rest of the afternoon, from Divine Hour on, it's going to be our specific guest speakers. From Divine Hour, we're going to have skits, we're going to have music for the day. The whole idea is it's about families. And again, it's a day you don't want to miss. We're going to have a special, special little um, mini skit presentation at the end of the day about, our ch about churches that you won't want to miss as well, which was done at our youth summit and at Red Zone. Okay? So family life. Now, it ends not just with the Friday evening and Sabbath, but on Sunday, with, there's a beach picnic trip planned. Who's aware of that? Who's aware? Were you aware of that? The family that plays together stays together. We're coming to get information. But then when we get information, we want to start to actually utilize it. We talked about that in Sabbath school. Are we having only head knowledge? But we know we about bonding. You. Have a blessed Sabbath day. in the time of storm. Mighty rock, rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand. Faithful God, God for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging floods may round us Shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, mighty rock in the weary land, pulling shade on the burning sand. Faithful God, faithful God, from the pilgrim's band, a shelter.
shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge there, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, rock in a weary land, cooling shit on the burning sand, faithful God. Shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Are you already feeling better? Happy Sabbath, church. Church is now called to worship. Please turn to your bulletins as we call to worship together. We will read responsibly. Come. All you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what does not serve? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will laugh in the riches of it. All together, give ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. Let us now recite Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, and St. John 3, verses 16 and 17. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. For the seventh day the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, not thy son, not thy daughter, I am a murdered servant, not thy maid servant, not thy cattle, not thy stranger that are in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made him an earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed his Sabbath day and holiday. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world, condemn the world, so that the world through him might be saved. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. For this is the covenant that you have made with our forefathers back then, dear Lord. And still today, it's still binding. You tell us to take rest. And we come, dear Lord, so that we can be blessed. Lord, here are your people. Touch their hearts even now as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Good morning, church. And happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Mark 5, 21 to 43. I will be reading alternatively. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship onto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And he, and he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And when he ha was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha, come, come, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto you, arise. Together, and he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given to her. Here ends the word of God. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. You may be seated. Amen. Shall we continue worshiping the Lord? Amen. Shall we magnify the name of Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, throughout this week, I've been battling the flu and a cold. But, you know, when God blesses you, he doesn't go halfway. He takes you all the way through. And so, as I minister to you today, there might be someone who, who might be struggling. You know, you have gotten to a point where you feel like giving up. And you feel like everybody is uh, against you. You want to make the right step and you want to go forward in Jesus Christ. But 
something of your past keep holding on to you, but I want you to know that when God forgives you, and when he gives you the grace to overcome, he gives you and he takes you all the way. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbles through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still old she came through the tears that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard. As she poured a love for the master from her box of alabaster. And I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. If I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my head, you were there the night when Jesus found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his. Of the oil in my alabaster box. Mm -hmm. You see, I can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner to the sins that had me. treasure box I thought I had found until the day when Jesus came to me and filled my soul with the wonders of his touch so now I am giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of I've been forgiven 
eyes open to hear from you. Individuals that be able who are hurting, who need you, Father, touch, cleanse, and make whole. So we come to you and want to be whole. We look at it, we are broken in the shadows, only you can make us whole. So have them, Lord, that we touch each and every speaker. But when we bring this speaker before you, you are my servant. Lord, put your word in his mouth. That the word you speak will not be hidden, but you speak it through it. Yeah. And the spirit of change that God brought about in his life, as we appear for today, yeah. may it change for about in our lives. That as we leave here, we will say that it was good to be in order to love. As we leave here, we will go and share and say, Come see a man. Come see a man who will reveal to me all that you have done. So that I can come and bring my own village to hear the good news of who you are. So Lord, have thy own way. And then only, as you use your mighty weapon today, clothe him with your righteousness. Shine through him as you did with Moses. As you speak your word, your word of comfort, your word of peace, your word of light, and your word of truth. I pray in your name, for through your son Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 the Lord again. Praise God. This song that I'm about to sing, I really didn't plan to sing it today, but it was by request. And so I know that there's somebody today who might be thinking that, you know what, it's very late. But with God, he does everything on time. Right. You know, our time is not God's time. And sometimes we worry about the things that we cannot fix. When God is saying to us that we need to learn patience and temperance and meekness through our experience. And so as we listen today and administer a song to you today, may your heart touch heaven and may you find favor with you.
God is great. He's never late. Still on time. Amen. Glory and honor and praise unto his holy name. For he is worthy to be praised. You know, this week, every time I have to come here to, let me take my glasses so I can see you properly. You know, every time I have to stand here, it's not an easy time for me, you know. By now, those of you who know me will know that preaching is not my gift. But God can use anybody. Amen. Ain't it? Yeah, yeah he do. Yes. Even David, he make him king. As a little boy, he was, he boasted in front of the Philistines army. But yet, when he become a man, he had to run from his own son, Absalom. Mm -hmm. He had to run from Saul. So God could use anyone. But still, he was God anointed. Eh? Amen. Amen. So this week, after I have decided what the Lord has wanted me to say, I, I wrote it. But when I write, I just can't see properly to know where I'm at when I'm reading it back to you. 
So I take it to my daughter. She always typed these things out for me. So I took it there Thursday, Thursday night. I went back last. I said, listen, I'm going to come back for it tomorrow. So when I get back there yesterday, last night, she said, oh, daddy, I, I, I was just about to start. So, so, <laughs> so I sit. She had my last grandchild going through the door right there now. I said, okay, give me the child. So I hold the child and I, she ended up sleep, sleeping in my arms and she continued. When she finished, the thing won't print. Her printer would not print that thing. So I said, all right. So we had to email it back to uh, my wife last night. And we have a print at the house. So thank God it worked out that it printed. So God is good. He always is willing and able to use that which he would use. I want to thank Pastor Hardcastle for allowing me to stand here again once more at this pulpit. I also want to thank you, the people who are here, so that I can encourage both of us. How about that? Yeah, we all need encouragement. It's not an easy time we are living in today, you know. I also want to thank the musician, Brother Lionel and Sister Anika, playing very well. God has blessed them. Do you know that Brother Lionel could play the saxophone very well? Oh yeah, he could. If you hear him, you, won't, you don't want to hear him again on the drums. No, that's true. If you really hear him. I try every time to get him to play special, but he always shy away. I also want to thank Sister Hood, you know, singing this morning, Alabaster Box, and um, Four Days Late. That's what my request. This time it's not John, but it's Jairus' daughter. And you will see. That's why I request that song. Amen? Yeah, amen? And even my life as a young boy, before I entered elementary, ent elementary school, I was so sick. Sick. My aunts and uncles, they would say to me, like, after I become like 18 or whatever, they say, you know, we don't know why you're still alive. Yeah. They thought I was dead already. But God has his purpose for each and every one of us. Amen. Yes, he do, you know. And then I had once, I had fell from my bicycle riding, and I was unconscious. You remember, you know people say that they see this light? Yeah, I did. The first time that I had that experience. I didn't even know myself. Someone gave me water. I didn't even know who gave me water, but it was a bad fall from my bicycle. So that was the second that was the second time God bring me forth again, you know. Uh, there was an, a third time I did a little um you call it a little surgery. But that was a medical induced, so I came through that again. And then one day I was in the city in my country and I went to the waterfront, you know, they rec reclaimed the lands. And it was all these rocks. So I decided to go there and take a, a sea bath, you know, throw up in the sea, and then I get up from the sea, you know, and I go on the, the, the rocks, and I sit, just watching the sea. <laughs> when I do catch myself, I was flat on my back. <laughs> and I get up and I say, I let me go home. So God is good. He is good. Don't you know God is good? Amen. Give him some praise. Amen. He's good. Those on the line, may you be blessed as God speaks to your heart today. Amen? Amen. Just take a listen to this. It says that um, it is one thing for a man to teach what he claims. It's quite another thing to prove that.
just give me a little moment here. That is why the miracles which Jesus performed are such a vital part of his ministry. You see, it's not for him to boast, but to show the power of God in human lives. Our, our text today our, is taken from um, Mark chapter 5, from verse 21 to 43, as I go through this with you. It's 12.30, so maybe before 1 o'clock we will be out of here. Let's see what happens as the Spirit leads. Today our text takes us into a hopeless situation. This time Jesus faces the greatest enemy known to man. You know who's that enemy? Death. <laughs> yes, that's enemy. Jesus faced death in these verses. And he walks away victorious. And you and me as well can walk away victorious. If only we believe. Only believe. You can, we can walk away victorious. One, the concept of, of his faith, Jairus' faith. A man named Jairus rushed into the crowd surrounding Jesus. His story served as the focus of these verses. He was a man whose small faith was about to grow very large. You know, sometimes we have this little faith. As the scripture says, if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. But I believe that sometimes our faith is even below, smaller than the mustard seed, so we can't move mountains. But if we get it up to the mustard seed size, we can move mountains. Amen? The direction of Jairus' faith. In verses 22 and 23, it says here, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. He knew the power of the living God. So he didn't waste any time. He get down on his knees before the master. You see, this man was a ruler of the synagogue. This means he was one of the officials who oversaw the business of the synagogue. He was responsible for making sure that Everything was ready and in order. Jairus possesses power, privilege, prestige, position, and prominence. He was at the top in those days, you know, not like today. Sickness and death had visited Jairus' home. And none of the position, and none of the positive things in his life could drive them away. Sickness and death visit his house. His power, his money, his position in the community, and even his religion was all powerless in the face of these enemies. I'm telling you, we could be Adventists, we could be Pentecostal. That name doesn't have any power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. His daughter was dying, and he needed help. Jairus needed help that none of this of his resources could provide. Doesn't matter what we have. How we think we have. Without God on our side, we are nothing. Weak, feeble, can't do anything. You know, while I was sitting there this morning, 
during the lesson study, I start to have a, a stomach ache. And I'm sitting there, and say, what is this, this morning? And I call upon the Lord. The Lord, you need to have me up here. If you didn't want me here, then you'd have never brought me here. Take care, Lord, take care. And I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling okay. So I know God is good. And he's able. He heard about Jesus. That's Javarius. Jairus, he heard about Jesus and he ran to him and humbled himself at Jesus' feet. Jairus didn't understand everything there was to know about Jesus, but he had come to believe that this man could heal. Because what? Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. Don't, don't forget that. Let me remind you that Chatterjee doesn't care who you are. Even as preachers, Chatterjee can strike. Why? Because we live in a world of sin. Not necessarily that anyone has done anything wrong, but because we live in this type of world, anything can happen to you. Even if God has promised you to live three scores and ten and in good health, many more, but he himself declared that someone could strike you down still. It's not his will that it should happen that way, but because of sin in the world, these things will happen. Let me remind you that Chatterjee doesn't care who you are. You could be the, the president of the United States of America. Things could happen to you. Trials of life are not going to pass you by. Let's look at Job 14 and verse 1 and see what that says there. Just turn to Job 14. And if you, you found it with a strong voice, someone, could you read that for me, please? Job 14, verse 1. That again? <laughs> a few days. Hmm? Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. So sometimes, you know, when I first become a Christian, I was saying to myself, well, now I'm a Christian, everything should be all right because Jesus will take care of everything else. That's when the enemy starts to test you. And he will never stop testing you until you go down in the earth. Also, John, John 16 and verse 33. John 16 and verse 33. Look at that as well. John 16. You could read it strong, my brother. So who said these things? This is Jesus speaking. Let me read it again. These things I have spoken unto you that in he might have peace in the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Thank you, Jesus, for overcoming the world so that I won't have to fear the world. Tragedy doesn't care that you go to church and return your tithe and your offering. Sickness and death could not care less about your achievement and assets. Doesn't matter what you have. It will come. But when it comes, how you stand is what important with the Lord. The depth of Jairus' faith in verse 23 and 24. This is what it says here. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. 
I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. He believed if Jesus could just get there, he can do great things. And Jesus went with him. And Jesus went with him. And much people follow him, strong him. You see, perhaps Jairus had heard what Jesus could do just by touching someone who is deceased or who is sick, who has a disease. Regardless of whether he had heard about or uh, seen it with his own eyes, Jairus believed that Jesus could heal his daughter. He believed the Lord's touch would bring healing to his trial. And so too, we believe. I guess if, if you didn't believe, you would not even be here. So you must have believed something to be here. Thus, this powerful man humbled himself at the feet of Jesus and cried out for the help he needed. This is the kind of faith the Lord is looking for in our lives. We must believe and trust and know that he will do what he said he will do. He wants us to come to the end of our own abilities. You know, sometimes we in situations and we try to work it out ourselves. And when we try to work it, instead of getting it done, it's, it's going deeper and deeper because of our own abilities. He wants us to come to the place where we know that we can't but believe that he can. You see, that he can do it for us. But first we must seek him so that he can do it for us. How does he do it for us? He speaks to us in our hearts. He gives us wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we know how to go about do things, to do things. You see, that's how he works with us. In all this, the confusion of Jairus' faith. In verse 24 to 35, it says here, and Jesus went with him and much people followed him. Let me just pause a little bit. You know, it's strange that um, Jesus is doing all these miracles and the people know of his greatness. But do you notice that when he is going anywhere, the crowd follow him, but yet they would not tear him apart? Hmm? Huh? Do you notice that? Every time Jesus does something, and the people know he's that powerful, but yet they follow him, but they will not try to touch him or pull him apart. But you know, today we have some powerful people that we, we call them powerful. Singers, stars. If they, walk, if they walk in the public, people will tear them apart. They will kill them. Yes. They can't walk alone. They have to have bodyguards around them to protect them. Jesus didn't have no bodyguard. And he was powerful everywhere he goes. The confusion of his faith. Let me continue. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she had said, if, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And this, and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked 
round about to see how that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that was that what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Verse 35. While he yet speak, there came from the ruler of, of the synagogue house, sorting which said, Thy daughter is dead. Thou, why troublest thou the master any further? Confusion of his faith. Jairus become confused now. But is it really so? Someone had said, a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Here we see Jairus pledging faith put to the test. A hopeless situation grew worse with each passing moment, and the faith that was weak was brought to the breaking point. Now remember, Jesus was on a mission for Jairus was not this woman, but for some reason, this woman heard that Jesus is passing by too, and she pressed behind the crowd. As the crowd began to get even bigger, she, she pressed, she pressed. I'm not going to give up. I must touch his gun because I believe, only believe. I believe if I touch, if I touch. Oh, the hem of Jesus' garment, I will be made whole. And she continued to press. And she did make it. Touches her garment. And she became healed. She was healed. And poor Jairus was there. Because now Jesus stopped moving. He turned around. Who touched me? And the disciples said, Master, come on. Look at so many people behind you. They, they are touching on you. But she had believed. Maybe there were more sick people there. But they did not believe like this woman. You see? Because the disciples said, everyone is touching on you. But only one woman had healed because she believed she did. So too, while we press, we must believe as well that Jesus can heal us. Confused by the hindering situation, those same verses that I just read, Jesus left to go with Jairus to heal his daughter. As he left, he was surrounded by the crowd and, ver and a very sick woman touched his garment and was healed. Jesus stopped to confront and comfort this woman. And as he did, precious minutes ticked by. And Jairus may be wondering, is he not going anymore? And make it even worse, the news that came. I would imagine that Jairus was confused and upset by this delay. After all, his daughter was dying. She didn't have much time and Jesus was wasting his time on this woman. On the surface, the Lord's delay seems a little insensitive. He knew the seriousness of the situation. He knew the broken heart of this father. He knew the urgency of the need, but Jesus paused to take care of the need at hand. How many times did um, we are going places and the Holy Spirit speaks to us, help someone along the way. And we've, no, I'll let me go about my business. No time for this right now. I got to get to work early. See? But Jesus take care of the situation at hand. What seems to be hard and harsh on the surface has some important lessons to teach us. One, that it doesn't run out 
Let me say that again. Diet it doesn't run on our schedule. It's not our time. God is not bound by the constraints of time and space. You can't place him where you want him, when you want him. He wants to call him to his will. You see? Two, when God doesn't move as quickly as you might or we might think, just trust him anyway. Trust him. If you call on him, just trust him. He will work it out. Verse 36, confused by hopeless situation. It says there that as soon as Jairus, let me read it again, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, what? Be not afraid, only believe. So he knew that even though Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, and he did believe in the beginning because he said to the master in verse 23, I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Even though he had believed that, still, with all the situation before him, his faith started to fail a little. And Jesus had to comfort him, he said to him. In verse 36, be not a be not afraid. Only believe. Who knows us more than God? He knows us. You see? Confused by hopelessness. As Jesus finally finished with the woman, some people came from Jairus' house with devastating news. His daughter had died. The news is blunt and final. Thy daughter is dead. And make it worse. You know, sometimes you know some situation that and um you, you expect some encouraging words and instead of you get encouraging words, I mean from the people who you expect to encourage you, they're giving you even bad news further. This is what this is the situation he finds himself in. His daughter had died. He knew the news is blunt and final. Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master anymore? Didn't he don't tell him? Don't be afraid. And he knew that Jesus can heal his, his daughter. They are saying, don't bother Jesus. Even he can't fix this problem. Really, there's no problem in the world that our God cannot fix. Your daughter is dead. There's nothing that he could do for you. That's just the way it is. Surely, this news rocked Jairus to his foundation. You know, I mean, all of us, many of us here, I guess, I would say, experience some kind of family member, a friend passed away. And how you felt, how you felt when that happened. Even if you know what the scripture says, it rocks you. I'm telling you. Uh, just two weeks, yeah, two weeks ago, uh, one of our sisters from another church had just passed away in New York. Every time I send something on Facebook, she will show up me. Hi, Brother Horn, how are you doing? She always. The first time I tried to go live on my phone, she said to me, my brother, you don't know how to go live. Yes. She always posts something every Sabbath. She always shows something positive. She went by a friend, as far as I understand, and she passed away there. Go rock the church. Can't believe. If she, she hasn't been buried yet. They still can't believe that she really got. But she can't. Sleeping. You see, have you ever had a, a brother, a sister, that gone? It rocks you. My brother was 50 years old when he, he had an accident. And my, uh, my younger brother called me and said, um, Steve, we call him T.I. T.I. Um, in an accident, but motorbike. 
and he's in the hospital. Five o'clock, just after five, when I'm, I'm just finishing up work, my phone rang again and I took it up. And my brother said to me, Steve, Tia is not with us anymore. It rocks me. I'm telling you. And I, I was under the car and I, and I came out and I stand up. And I'm telling you, I start to cry. And my boss came in the same time and he was telling me something about some vehicle. I didn't even hear that. And he said to me, go home. I'm telling you, that rocks you. Doesn't matter what you know about the scriptures. It rocks you to your foundation, especially if it's close. But we have hope. Great hope in Jesus. Doesn't matter what happened. You see, he will raise up in the last day. The dead in Christ will rise first. Remember. So Jairus' foundation was rock. Yes? But that didn't deter him because Jesus already comforted him. Conformed by the Savior's work. Jesus overheard the words from those who brought the news of the girl's death. Jesus also knew the fear that rested within Jairus' heart. Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. So Jesus and Jairus continue on to the house because they hadn't reached yet. When they arrived, the mourners were already there. The mourners were waiting. That should be wailing. They were wailing and crying. Sad tunes were played on flutes. Jesus approached this scene and made a strange statement. He told the mourners to stop their wailing because the little girl was not dead, only sleeping. You know, some time ago, I said this to someone, and they, they watched me like I'm crazy. You know, most, most of us have, ex well, I will say everybody has experienced death in a farm. You think I'm crazy, huh? No, because when you're sleeping, as you're sleeping, sleeping, not dreaming, when you're sleeping, you know it's nothing whatsoever. You don't even know that you are breathing if you're still alive. So you experience that. That's what Jesus is talking about. It's she, she is sleeping. You know, this week I had my um, co-worker. He was, <laughs> I had to stand up. Okay, we were talking about this, and he, he said, man, listen, man, Jesus, Jesus dead. I said, no, he's alive. I said, you don't believe the word of God, but I'm telling you Jesus is alive. He said, listen, he knows when everybody should die and what should happen to them and so forth. I said, because of sin. This is what is happening. He already told us these things will happen, but that doesn't mean that he wants it to happen that way. You see, he has to allow the enemy to do his part, too. Because God is a just God, you see. So the mourners, they laughed at him, but there was much truth in his words. She is just sleeping. A, a good friend of ours told us that um, in Africa, when someone dies, they practically have mourners come to the house, and they will stay there for at least seven days crying and wailing, and you have to feed them. Yeah, you have to feed them. If no food, they would leave. But they will come, and they will wail, and they will cry, even if they don't even know the person. I, I mean, this was told to us by an African person. So you see, so this is true. They will cry, they will wail, and it must feed them. They're not leaving until those seven days pass, uh, uh, however long you want them to stay there. What a lesson for us. No situation that we can think of uh, is beyond his ability. None whatsoever. When you are faced with a hopeless situation, remember that the words of the Lord and let his words be all the support your faith needs. 
let his word they are good counselors out there but remember the word of God let his word secure your faith maybe it's not his will for you to be healed but make sure you go to the Lord first always confirmed by the Savior's work verse 40 to 43 it says here and they laughed him to scorn but when he had put them all out he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and then that war with him and entered in where the damsel was lying and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her Talita Kamini which is being interpreted damsel I say unto you unto thee to arise and straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was of the age of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat yeah you see Jesus sent the mourners and the spectators away you see if you're going to do something for the Lord are you going to ask the good Lord to do something for you you don't want anyone who don't believe around you I'll say it again if you're going to ask the Lord for anything you don't want anyone who don't believe to be there I remember in New York uh, the, the men's ministry leader we had a brother who had um, come down with cancer and he had lost his job because of that you know and he came to church and he doesn't have any work anymore and the doctor gave up on him and tell him listen you got to go home we can't do anything more for you so for the, the men's ministry leader said let's 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 go to his house and let's pray him up we never know what the Lord will do for him so we went but before we, we went there many brethren wanted to go we say okay we have no problem we will go so when we get there <laughs> we said listen if you don't believe we don't want you in his room we I mean we said it so if you don't believe that God can heal him we don't want you in the room stay out here until we finish so we went in and we sing songs we prayed we read the scriptures today he's still alive he's still alive so go in and praise unto God when man give up on you, God doesn't. So Jesus sent the mourners and the spectators away. With Jairus, the girl's mother, and Peter, James, and John, he entered the room where the girl's body was. He took her by the hand and said, Talita Kamini, which is being interpreted. Damsel, I say unto you, the arise. What a tender words word spoken softly could you imagine could you imagine the feeling for the father and the mother to see their child alive thank God for everything that he has done for us without him we are nothing and in the end, he will still raise us up. As I conclude, if Jesus can do this, I said, if Jesus can do this, there is nothing, and nothing is impossible with him. Nothing. What is impossible with man? It is all possible with God. That last power our family member can be saved if only we believe if only we seek God if only we don't give up when times get hard 
Like all we have to do is press. That impossible situation in, in our lives hmm, can be handled. It doesn't matter what the president says. If only you believe. I said, if only you believe, everything is possible. Because God himself say, he placed man where he want him to be in the world. As a matter of fact, he said, when you leave where you were living before and enter into another land, and have been blessed, you don't forget him. Give him praise. We come from our country, most of us, and we've been blessed cars, homes, good jobs, education, but yet some of us, even some of us who were giving praise back there, we come here, we forgot him. I know people, I know. Once I remember I used to go to a church. I wasn't, I wasn't Christian at the time, but my children were, were Christian, so they, I would go sometimes, and I know one lady, she would pray a, a storm. Sometimes I would say, I would give joke, I'd say, man, this woman make my knee hurt, you know. <laughs> Back then, she came to America, forgot God. But God is always calling us, calling us. <clears throat> See, that incredible need that you think is so great can be met. Whatever need it is can be met by the master. All you have to do is believe, only believe. And even if you don't, Bring that need to pass for you. Trust him still. When the answers to your problems are delayed, believe Jesus. Believe Jesus. You may have a problem that you cannot handle. It is bigger than you. Or, and out of your control, he can handle it. it he can cut it down to size and cut it down to size. Yes. Bring it to Jesus and trust him to take care of it for his glory. Believe Jesus will not fail you. Never will fail you. Remember, wherever you go, trust Jesus. Amen? Amen. I would like you to stand so I can pray with you just before they have the closing hymn. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. For we have heard the good news of salvation brought to Jairus' home and even to the woman with the issue of blood, Lord, because she pressed, believing she can be made whole. So to Lord, touch our hearts and help us only to believe. Help us not to be afraid. Strengthen us, Lord, where we are losing courage. Give us the hope that we need to stand, knowing that you have overcome the world, and you say, fear not. We thank you for your guiding light. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who will continue to enlighten us and empower us so that we can do the things that you have asked us to do. Lord, and help us not to be afraid, but to come boldly to the throne of grace so that when we come, you can heal us, you can strengthen us, and we can go forward to spread the good news of what you have done for us so that many who hear will glorify your name and be saved in your kingdom, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as you may stand in for the benediction, and the benediction is going to be a little bit different this afternoon, but it's the benediction.
we all together. May his peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we meet again. Till we meet that day, show. Me.